What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Comically Boston. Today is episode 59. It is May the 4th. Be with you. 2023. Ooh, another Star Wars day uh, in the books. And today is actually the day that I'm going to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I have a 645 showtime with my good friend Mr. Langone. Super excited for that, but we'll talk predictions for that movie at the end of this video. You know me, the first thing we're going to talk about is the sports. Celtics lost game one, 119-115 to the 76s. JT had 39 points, 11 rebounds. Jalen Brown had 23, Brogdon had 20. The 76ers didn't have Joel Embiid in the game, but Harden drops 45 in a huge shot with time running down on the clock over Al Horford. You can see there was only like 10 on the clock. Yeah. With 10 seconds left, James Harden hits this huge three over some decent defense by Al Horford here, but James Harden's going to James Harden. He drops 45. We lose game one at home. Very disappointing there, but... Last night, we played game two in much better fashion. We win 121-87. A 34-point dub. The series is now 1-1. Jalen Brown had 25 points. JT, Jason Tatum, had 7 points. Very low scoring for him. He was 1 for 7, played 19 minutes. He was 5 for 5 from free throw. And he had 4 fouls. So he was in foul trouble. That's why he wasn't playing all too much. And it was closer during some parts of the game. But then all of a sudden, we pulled away. And we just weren't closing the gap. And that's how we want to win games. 34 point dub. That's a very commanding victory after a, a loss that shouldn't have really been a loss. But Embiid was back for this game. He only had 15. Harden had 12. So... You know, if Embiid's out and Harden's dropping 45, and together they're only dropping 27 together, um, like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, that's good defense by us, but our bench players really came through, and a lot of people scored good points for us, um, and we didn't even need Jason Tatum. So, game three and game four, we're heading to Philadelphia, and there's already going to be a game five, so we'll head back to Boston for game five. So, stay tuned for that. We'll talk more about how they do in the future, but how the bracket's looking around the NBA right now. The Nuggets are up 2-0 on the Suns. The Golden State Warriors are down 1-0 to the Lakers over in the East. The series is tied 1-1 for the Heat Knicks. Good for the Knicks. They pick up a game over the Heat. I honestly would rather face the Knicks than the Heat in that matchup, but is what it is, and we are 1-1 with the 76ers ourselves. Game 2 of the of the Warriors-Lakers is on at 9 o'clock tonight, so that should be interesting. I'll probably catch the tail end of that when I get home from the movies tonight. But elsewhere in the world, we had the Met Gala the other night, and Pedro Pascal repping this red suit. I like the red, but why is he wearing shorts with the hairy leg out? I actually kind of like it, repping just manhood and got his hairy legs out. Man, nice, Pedro. Next, we have Florence Pugh. She's got her shaved head look, which is, I think, from Dune Part 2, which just came out with the trailer the other night. We'll talk about that in a second. We got Simu Lu, Shang-Chi himself. He's looking good with the leather gloves and the all black. Looking very similar to Mr. Kihei Kwan. He looks fucking mean. Ooh! He looks like that Waylon from... If you guys know, you know from um, Everything Everywhere All at Once, he's the Waylon from the universe without his wife, and he's smoking a cigarette in the alley in an all-black suit. He looks so cool. Oh, God, I can't wait to see him as a TVA agent, I believe, in Loki Season 2. That's going to be some exciting stuff. That should be probably August or end of this year, I think. Um, probably fall, November-ish. And the last one from the Met Gala here, we have Taika Waititi. He's got Mr. Bold Head now. <laughs> but I like the tattoo hanging out, you know, the gray. Looks good. Looks good. Also, just a quick uh, reminder. 15 years ago, Iron Man was released in theaters with the Jericho missile and the scene where he gets shot by a fucking <laughs> a tank. 
he crashes and then he comes up out of the pit and he's like and you just hear like the sound design of the first iron man is so perfect because you just hear like the mechanical parts moving like tank shoots at him you hear boom and then all of a sudden you hear you know like he moves out the way and then you just hear pew, he shoots this little missile but it's a much bigger boom you know what i mean like oh just there's such cool shit goes on in that movie and i rewatched that the other day and still holds up man but I, the first time i seen that movie i was nine years old and i watched that movie in theaters and then I don't know what happened. I saw it, it was the first one, so I saw it in theaters. And then probably like between 10 and what, 13, I was probably just busy being a kid um, and, you know, hanging out with friends and shit. And we didn't have cars, so we couldn't go to movies, so we were doing other shit. Um, but like, I feel like I missed Captain America, Thor, one, um, what else was there? Whatever was before Avengers, you know, like, I felt like I missed some movies. Like, I think just Thor 1 and Cap, I didn't see until I was at home. And, like, I feel like I, I saw Avengers and then, like, I missed Guardians of the Galaxy. And then, at a certain point, we started seeing every single one of these in theaters, me and my buddies. But I have seen all of them in theaters for, like, the last probably 15 to 20 movies, like, well before Endgame. I mean, shit, we went and saw Force Awakens in theaters twice when it came out. Just because we were like, holy shit, a Star Wars movie in our lifetime back in the theaters? Like, I saw Revenge of the Sith when I was a kid, but that was, the, like, I was still young as shit. And I remember seeing that in the theaters, like, losing my mind. Like, oh my god, that's Darth Vader. Like, he's going to become Darth Vader at the end of that movie. Oh, that movie's so good. Star Wars, Marvel, so fucking good. I just, I've been re-watching both those franchises recently, and they just stick the landing, man. They're always good stuff. But, last thing I'm going to talk about before I talk Guardians of the Galaxy 3 predictions is Dune Part 2 came out with this poster. They're going to be out November 3rd, 2023. As you can see at the top, you got Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Burrell, and Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, David Batista, Christopher Walken, Stephen McKinley Henderson, Lee Sadoks, oh, Stellan Skarsgård, Charlotte Rambling, and Javier Bardem. Oof, that's a killer list at the top there. But the trailer came out uh, yesterday, and I watched that trailer, and go check that out if you haven't. Oof, if you haven't seen the first movie, it's on HBO Max, it hit different man like and i and i even rewatched like the 64 1964 or whatever year it came out the original dune that one's tough tough to watch that one but i mean there's still some some great shots in it but there's not it's not a flawless movie um <laughs> it's definitely an old movie for sure uh but the new one just modernizes it and makes it so fucking cool and crazy and like drags you into the story but visually that movie you know like the visuals in that movie are somehow way better than the any dialogue that can possibly happen in that film you know what i mean like so good um but finally here let's talk the guardians of the galaxy three predictions Ooh. first off who will die will anyone die who who out of the guardians will die or even Hey, will anyone else die in this movie? Um, you know, will maybe uh, the Ravengers in Sylvester Stallone's characters be in this movie? Maybe he dies. I don't know. Um, but I have a feeling that nobody really dies in this film. You know, maybe Gamora. I have a feeling maybe Gamora or maybe Rocket dies. But Rocket's CGI. You know what I mean? So Bradley Cooper could be 110 and still be voicing Rocket. You know what I mean? And Rocket will still look the same because he's CGI. You know, like, he doesn't age necessarily like actors do. Um, I think Dave Bautista's not going to die, but he's going to be done. Like, people that are done after this movie, I think, will be Peter Quill, you know, Chris Pratt, Dave Bautista. Um, Gamora will be done. Uh, Zoe Zaldana. You know, there's going to be certain people that I feel like are done. And then there's going to be certain people that I feel like maybe will carry on. Like, for some weird reason, I think... Because Nebula and and Rocket were on Earth 
for the blip, like they lost everybody. And those two had five years of just them two are the only guardians left before they, you know, fix the few, the past, um, by time jumping and shit. But like, oh, like this story, this third one's going to be about Rocket. And I've been very good about avoiding spoilers and shit so far. So like, this is all just speculation. So I'm guessing here. Um, on what I think might happen can, based on what I've seen so far from the MCU. Um, and also, I know James Gunn is not afraid to kill characters, so maybe somebody dies. Maybe even, like, we it, we introduce Herbert Wyndham, the High Evolutionary, played by Chaguri Awuji. What a name. Um, but he, I think, could die. You know, maybe they they fight him this movie we're gonna i've heard we're gonna see some pretty dark stuff from this character like he's not really a villain that like thanos where they try to justify why he's doing what he's doing by giving him some backstory i'm pretty sure people just think of the high evolutionary as a bad dude you know he's a bad dude that does fucked up shit and the galaxy knows it and they avoid him and they know it because uh what's his name um yondu knows what happened to rocket you know, when he says in volume two, he's like, I know what them scientists done made you. Don't give a rat's ass about you. You know, fucking Roker. Oh, man. I really love Yondu's character. So I'm hoping maybe Kraglin really knows how to use that, the Yaka arrow um, this time around. But I'm, I'm real excited. But on to the next big question for the predictions. Who will cameo? Any Avengers cameo in? Um, I, I don't think we're going to see any Avengers cameos. Maybe in like a post credit scene we'll see like a Star Fox, you know, like an Eternals type of deal. They are out in space, you know, Guardians out in space. Um, I am going to predict that uh, Tanavir Tavan the Collector, um, I feel like the Collector is going to play a big part in this movie. Because in the holiday special, the Guardians bought Nowhere, the Celestial Head. So what's the deal there? You know, like, why did all of a sudden the collector sell where his collection is? Did he move to a different place? Did he move to, like, Ego's dead head? Who knows? You know, like, but I feel like we're going to get... James Gunn's very good at also building the world around him while telling the story that he's telling. But I don't know, man. I feel like this one's going to be real sad. I think it is already confirmed that there's two post credit scenes. Um... And the last question I'm going to ask here is, what will the fate of the Guardians of the Galaxy be? Who lives? You know, like, who is left? And for some weird reason, I think Rocket and Nebula, you know, even though Karen Gillan is, you know, with the kind of old cast, I feel like she's going to be carrying on. I think it will be Karen Gillan, Nebula, Rocket, Groot, because Rocket and Groot are both animated so they can be wherever they need to be they can literally be in any show ever and you just need to get bradley cooper and vin diesel to say i am groot you know and bradley cooper and noah booth um so like those characters i feel like will will lead like i think nebula and, Ro and rocket will be the leaders of the guardians of the galaxy after this um i think maybe they'll they'll grab mantis potentially maybe she'll stick around because she's hilarious um, maybe she'll go retire with Drax or something. Maybe even Mantis dies. And, and that's the scene that we see in the trailer that Peter Quill is losing his shit. Um, but I feel like when he's losing his shit, he's either seeing a flashback of his mom or he's seeing Rocket or Gamora die. You know, or it could be Mantis. You know, he just got, found out that he had a sister. So, I don't know, man. It's going to be some crazy shit. But I think maybe Adam Warlock will be on this team with Rocket, Groot, and Nebula. Um, and maybe there's some, oh, we still have Cosmo, the space dog, Kraglin, so I don't know if Kraglin will stay, because James Gunn's his brother, so, I don't know, but comment below what do you think will happen in the Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and stay tuned for another video, probably coming out either Friday or Sunday, where I will be talking my thoughts about Guardians of the Galaxy 3, spoiler-free review at the beginning, first half of that episode, and then I'll talk full juicy spoilers by the end of it. And I hope you guys enjoy this movie as well. Comment below, do you already have your tickets? Where are you from? Where are you seeing it? I'm going to Boston. No, I'm from Boston. But I'm going to Burlington Mass tonight to see that theater. AMC with good guy Langone. So I'll have to touch base with him here in a second. See if we're grabbing Din Din beforehand. I think we will. Some B-dubs. Be a good time. But 
stay tuned, y'all, for more content. We got some Lego videos coming Saturdays, and we got more Comic Book Boston coming your way. The links in the description for my so other social medias at Comic Book Boston on Instagram and at Big Cam YouTube on Twitter. Go follow those. Smash that link. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Hit that bell if you're new so you don't miss any future videos. And I'm Big Cam. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.